Prepare to dominate the competition. With the 4870X2, you guys have been waiting to see it. And it is here. And I'm so thrilled to have it in front of me. I feel like Dr. Evil with some new evil toy. And this one's gonna be all mine because I'm not giving it back. This is the R700. It's just like the RV770, which is your 4870 and 4850 video cards, but it's X2. That means twice the power, twice the GPU, and ironically enough, the memory is not twice. It's four times the memory because they quadrupled what you get. You get 512 of GDDR5 on the 4870. You get two gigabytes of GDDR5 on this thing. It's insane. And here's the best part. If you guys remember the 3870X2, they actually, uh, they slowed down the memory because they had two GPUs and everything was getting really hot. This one, they don't. Full force, full speed, awesome. It's 3600 megahertz. All right, so let's talk about the specs on this. You gotta remember there's almost two of everything that I'm gonna tell you now. So, starting off right here, you're gonna see them. If, if you look at the back, you can see them. This are your two GPUs. Those are clocked at 750 megahertz. They're 260 millimeter squared surface dies, so they're not as big as the uh, NVIDIA cards. They're the same size as the 4870. They're small, they're efficient, they're 55 nm. As far as stream processors go, or shaders, whatever you wanna call them, you had 800 on the 4870. Now you have 1600 in total. 1600 ALUs, that's insane. That's Test 10 SIMD clusters, each with 80 32 bit shader processors. Very, very, very insane. Those are also running at 750 megahertz, so they're matched to the core clock. That eventually gives you 2.4 teraflops of simple precision shading power. It's insane. That is a lot of raw computing power, guys. If you've, uh, you know, that's there's nothing like that right now on the market. It really is insane. Uh, you get 80 texturing units in total. That's 40 and 40, one for each GPU. You are using, again, the GDDR5. It's not scaled down. It's running at full frequency, the same as the 4870. It's two gigabytes in total. And of course, it's operating at 3600 megahertz. It's actually 900 is the actual amount, but it's quad pumped because it's GDDR5. That brings up to 3600 megahertz. So that's pretty insane. That's a... Uh, it's pretty insane, right, Randy? I'm sure you want one of these. I want one. I'm taking this one home with me. Now, let me tell you about something else on here. Uh, the two... Let me talk about the memory. The memory on, on this card is actually being used as one gigabyte and one gigabyte. It's not two in total. The GPUs are not accessing each memory individually. They're actually going to one or the other. They're not going to a combined two gigabytes. Now, what does that mean? That means you could possibly, possibly in the future saturate the PCI Express 2.0 bus on here. So what AMD did was between the two GPUs right here, there's actually something called, uh, what's it called? Side port or something like that. It's a new technology. It's a side port interface. And what that's going to do, it's going to increase the bandwidth when PCI Express 2.0 is being fully, fully used. It's going to be two lanes of five gigabytes per second. Uh, so you see that there in the picture, it's the orange ones. So those are gonna go between the two. So that's very uh, interesting. It's not turned on just yet, but AMD will be activating it via you know driver updates as soon as they get around to it. Uh, now, back to the specs on the card. As far as the interface goes, just like the 4870, it's a 256 bit wide interface, 115.2 gigabits per second of throughput times two. So that's pretty insane. And this card sucks in total, total power suckage. It's 286 watts. It's a lot of power, it's a lot of juice. So if you have two of these, you're definitely, definitely gonna need over, over a thousand watt power supply to run your computer and two of these cards. Uh, they take up a lot of power and they do run pretty hot. Uh, these were running almost about 90 degrees centigrade, just the way they are factory out of the box. So they run fine. No artifacts, runs perfect, but they do run hot, so make sure you have a cool case. Uh, if you have any fans, make sure you load up on all your fans, you're gonna need them. This thing does run hot. It was able to overclock just a little bit. Uh, I won't get into that now, but I am gonna do a 4870 quad fire versus triple SLI GTX 280 video. So when I do that, we'll talk about overclocking on that one. Stay tuned to see that. Um, what else? Obviously, DirectX 10.0. One is on here, which is very nice. You also get something called UVD 2.0. That's kind of new, actually. That's great for uh, high def everything. Pretty much, God, this thing doesn't, this thing is so heavy, it does not even want to stand up. All right, so UVD 2.0, pretty much what that is, is it's great for high def everything. Uh, encoding and decoding, it's gonna send 7.1 channel audio through the DVI to your TV. So, included in the box, obviously, I would have shown you this in the walk around, but 
a USB, I'm sorry, a DVI to HDMI adapter. Now this adapter will transfer 7.1 audio and it's full, full audio. It's lossless, it's 7.1, it's DTS, ES, or any other format you want all through it. So that's actually pretty much brand spanking new to the market as far as audio goes through. You also get a DVI to VGA converter in case you're still using those, provided in the box as well. I'm, you're gonna need these, but uh, you might not, depending on what kind of power supply you have. But this is an 8-pin PCI Express to two 4-pin Molex connectors. So that's nice, because you are gonna need an 8-pin to power this thing. And then here's a nice little 6-pin PCI Express to Molex, which you also may need. Uh, now, talking about power, let's take a look at what you do require on here. Looking right over here, you do have a 6-pin PCI Express connector, and then as well an 8-pin PCI Express connector. So you can't slack on the power supply. You're gonna need to have a pretty powerful, pretty nice power supply to run these, uh, but it's not too, too bad. And let's see what else can I show you on this thing. Here's your Crossfire X connector, very nice. And it comes, of course, with the bridge in the box. Very nice, if you wanna run two of these in Crossfire X, you just put the bridge right there, you're good to go. Of course, PCI Express 2.0 on the bottom, very nice. And then a very, very nice cooler. Uh, partially adopted from the 3870X2, but modified and proved. And you know what I particularly liked about this? It doesn't let any hot air go back into the case. It shoots all the hot air out the port, uh, which most, you'd be surprised, not all cards do. Sometimes they're not sealed right here in this area or down here, and they actually let a lot of hot air out into the case, which is no good. Uh, so that's a very nice uh, thing from you know, AMD to do for us. Uh, keeps the case nice and cool. and. Uh, that's about it. Let's uh, go into some benchmarks. This is what you guys really want to see. I have a lot of benchmarks. I went through the trouble of doing Crossfire uh, versus SLI video cards. So here they are. Let's get started. There's a lot. Bring that chart up, Randy. First game we're going to go to, Age of Conan, one of the most popular games out right now, selling like hotcakes. Everyone likes it. I actually haven't played it much except the benchmark. I don't have the time to play those crazy RPGs, but let's take a look at it. Starting from the top, 4870X2. Look at that, 50 frames per second. It didn't scale very well in Crossfire. It matched at 50 frames per second. But if you do look at versus two 4870s in Crossfire, it did get a nice improvement of eight frames per second. So it's running at 42 for just the 4870 in Crossfire. Now, take a look at the 280 in SLI, only 40 frames per second. So this thing is killing it. One 4870 did 23. That's pretty interesting. Uh, let's Let's take a look at Oblivion. My friends are obsessed with Oblivion. They played Morrowind and now they're playing Oblivion and they've lost their minds. They haven't stopped playing it in like six months. It's crazy. Looking at the 4870X2 in Crossfire at the top at 76, beating out the 280 GTX or the GTX 280 in SLI with 67 frames per second. That's a nice nine frame increase. The GTX 260 in SLI did 57. The 1280 did 39 and 14870 did 27. Mind you, that's at 30 inch resolution, four times anti-aliasing, 16x anthroscopic filtering. That's very, 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 very high settings, very high resolution. This is probably one of the first cards that has ever been able to play some of these games at 30 inch resolution equally. Uh, next game we're gonna go to Crisis. You all wanna see Crisis now. Crisis is actually optimized kind of for the NVIDIA architecture, but AMD did an amazing job on the, on the game. Uh, I didn't actually get to do three GTX 280s. I will do it eventually, but here's two versus two of these. Uh, starting off with the 4870X2 in Crossfire, 38 frames per second. This is 30 inch resolution, very high, uh, with no anti-aliasing and no other filters, but that's insane for a 30 inch monitor. So 38 frames per second, 14870X2 did 34. That's insane. The 280 in SLI did 32, one did 21, and one 260 is 19 frames per second. That's barely, barely playable. It's insane. Uh, that's just, that's it. What else can I say? I think that three GTX 280s might beat out two of these. I'll find out soon enough. I didn't get a chance to do it, but we'll find out about that. Let's go to the next game, which is gonna be Grid. Awesome, really fun racing game. I love Grid. Starting off the 4870X2 in Crossfire at 101 frames per second. That's insane. 14870X2 did 84, beating out the GTX 280 in SLI. So that's pretty impressive. One card beat that one, beat two GTX 280s on grid. Again, this is 30 inch resolution, four times anti aliasing. This card is absolutely, absolutely insane. Everything about it, it beat everyone with, I mean, look at it, look at the benchmarks. It beat everybody. It did not lose one game. Uh, we'll see if it loses Crisis with three GTX 280s, but for now, this is the new king on the block. You've seen it. I'm very happy to have it in my hands. The 4870X2. You guys wanted to see this. If you have any questions, email me. I'll see you guys next time.
For more information on the Sapphire Radeon 4870X2 video card, go to CompUSA.com and type in A271-4872 into the search box. Or you can call us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 1-800-COMP-USA.